Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the June meeting of the Lecture and Board of Directors. My name is Jill Barnett. I am the General Manager, and I would like to turn the meeting over to our Chair, Mr. Harding Dowell. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order, and we will call the roll. Uh, Ms. Rogers is absent. Mr. Ward? Present. Mr. Schoeninger? Present. Uh, Ms. Morris Gonzalez? Present. Thank you. Mr. Motley? Present. I'm here. Judge Thurston? Present. And Dr. Capo is absent, but perhaps running late. Uh, so we have a quorum. We can continue. Is there any public comment today? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to approval of the minutes from the May 23 meeting. Has everyone had a chance to read? Are there any questions or corrections? And if not, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. George, motions to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second from Judge Thurston. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, only thing on the chair's report today is uh, that I have named a nominating committee. You'll see in the proposed agenda items for July, they include board officer elections. Uh, the nominating committee for the upcoming year will be uh, Ms. Borges Gonzalez and Judge Thurston. Thanks to both of them for serving in that role. Um, so that is the, the all of the, uh, <clears throat> the chair's report for this month. Uh, we will move into the monthly performance report and financials. Lay it on us, Fred. Mr. Combs, as he approaches the podium for the performance report, um, I had planned to say congratulations to Dr. Acapo, who is perhaps running a little bit late. Um, as you know, Dr. Acapo has been named uh, president of Kentucky State University, so we thank him for the work that he has done at BCTC and wish him well in his new role. He did tell me that he will be here um, shortly, um, so hopefully he will join in. Mr. Combs, whenever you are ready. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy to present our performance report for May of 2023. Uh, we'll start with our mission statement. We serve people in our community with mobility solutions. And some of the highlights for last month, uh, Joe Barnett presented LexTran's fiscal year 2024 budget to the Lexington Fayette Urban County Council on May 23rd. Um, I believe that passed unanimously. Uh, LexTran held a job fair on May the 18th and conducted more than 10 interviews. Um, Wheels on Time performance that we've been tracking for the last few months has increased to its highest level since March of 2022. And we held our pension committee on May the 9th. Some commendations for May. Uh, Jordan Anderson, who's a bus operator, um, customer said about him, he is a very pleasant driver and I enjoyed the bus ride with him. Uh, another customer said, I wanted to let you know that Talika Harris, a bus operator, is really nice and has great attitude. We had received additional commendations for Misty Hellard, Keith Sleep, and Tiffany Neely, who is a customer service representative. So into the ridership for May, um, we were at about 245,000 trips. That is sort of right in track of where we'd expect to be following our monthly average. Um, you know, we do typically see our lowest ridership of the year during the summer months. Uh, so that is to be expected. That is still about 45,000 more trips than what we saw in May of last year. Um, and I, I think I've been saying that every month that we've had a significant increase from the previous or the month of the previous year. Um, as I'm looking at the underlying numbers here, as we get into August and, August and September, we might see those numbers shrink down a little bit. Um, ridership's still going to be up, but I don't think we're going to see you know 45,000 more trips than the, the year prior. And we talked about that a little bit through our budgeting process and those um, assumptions that we made in our ridership projections. I think in, in August and September, we're probably going to see that play out. So if, if in September, I'm not saying we did 45,000 more trips than we did the previous September, um, that's to be expected. But I hope I do say that. I mean, I'm happy to be wrong on that one. <laughs> um, in paratransit, we were 13,390 trips. That's the most we've seen since September of 2022. So the most that we've seen under our ATP devs uh, tenure as our provider. That is an increase, or I'm sorry, a decrease of about 2,000 trips since the previous May. So we saw heading into December the lowest point of ridership on paratransit, but since December through May, you can see a, a little bit of a trend upwards. Um, that is good news. That is in line with the, the transition to RTP Dev. I think that shows that, along with the increase in um, on time performance, shows that things are starting to, to turn around and get on track. Might not have happened as quickly as we wanted it to happen, um, but we are seeing some, some signs of progress there. So our percent change relative to monthly average on fixed route, we were about a half percent up, so essentially right where we would expect to be. And again, you can see on this chart really the trend that we were talking about from December through May, um, that's starting to come back up um, on, in terms of ridership. So we were about 17% below on paratransit. 
Our system productivity as a whole, um, our year to date on fixed route, we're about 700,000 trips up for the fiscal year uh, and about 19,000 trips down on paratransit for the fiscal year. Um, weekday, Saturday, and Sunday, I think we're seeing the, the increase and decrease on the systems uh, play out as we would expect. And again, revenue miles and hours were, came in about um, you know, as expected. I don't think there's anything really notable on those KPIs. For safety, our preventable accidents per 100,000 miles was uh, 2.41. That is um, four preventable accidents uh, for the month. Injury frequency rate just below 20. That is um, three OSHA reportable injuries for the month. Um, so those two KPIs, I think, are a little higher than what John would like them to be. Um, but at least on the year to date for, for preventable accidents, we are still under where we were last year. Uh, on paratransit, 1.15 preventable accidents per 100,000. That is um, another solid KPI for them for the month. On maintenance, our miles between road calls was nearly 10,000. I think that's an, an excellent uh, number for maintenance. And then 58 of our 58 preventive maintenance inspections were completed on time. So that concludes the performance report. Happy to answer any questions or turn it over to Ms. Falconberry for the financials. I don't have a question, Mr. Chair, but I passed a training bus yesterday and I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It was, we so, it was so exciting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have Ms. Nikki Falkenberry to the podium for delivery of financial statements. We're happy to have you have her here today. Thank you. I've, I was sick earlier in the week and didn't have a voice, so hopefully we'll make it through this today. Um, we are 11 months into our fiscal year, and uh, at this point, we are at a, a very good place at this point of the year with our operating cash. We've had some uh, grant fundings come in, and um, so we're at a very good point. Um, I made a note on the financials. The accounts receivable always look a little uh, odd at this time of the year because we have some June 30 uh, entries to make. Uh, so we, we will get those done um, in, the, in the next month, um, preparing for that. Next month when you see the balance sheet and the financials, it will have uh, an audited on there, which means it could change depending on what entries that we have because there are a whole lot of entries to make for June and we uh, there's not usually enough uh, time, plus we have uh, some audit adjustments. So you'll see those unaudited for the month of May, but then you'll see the finals when the audit's presented. Um, so our accounts receivable at this point uh, looks a little odd because we had some money come in, so I'll just be doing some transfers from the work in process up to accounts receivable. Um, otherwise, we're in very good shape on uh, the balance sheet, unless anyone has any questions. Okay, our statement of revenue and expenses. I think we're in a very good position um, at this point. We've been, we've been um, very, very excited to see the amount of property taxes that have come in this year. Our full budget for the year, uh, FY23, was a little under 21 million, and we're already at 22.3, so we're very pleased about that. So it came in a little higher this year than we had uh, expected. Uh, passenger revenue is running steady, as Fred mentioned with our ridership. Um, our federal funds that uh, we have, of course, these are our regular 5307 plus some of the COVID relief money that uh, is trickling in. We uh, have about uh, two, two more draws on uh, that, so we should be have all of that money drawn down uh, as it is reimbursable, if you remember, uh, by September. Um, our advertising revenue at this point, uh, I think we mentioned last month that right now uh, at the end of June, we probably will see that number closer to 300,000. Uh, so we'll be able to let you know at the next meeting what that number comes in at. Um, our wages and fringe at this point are still in very good shape. We do have uh, some vacancies, as you know, but we've uh, done pretty well lately with our uh, hiring. We've um, added, uh, as you mentioned, a training class. Every time, every time we see those, we get, we get excited too. Uh, materials and supplies is over. That's our bus parts, uh, as we mentioned before. Some of the parts have been on back order. Some of them have cost three times more than um, 
they had been. So I'm actually really pleased that it's uh, at this point 130,000 over. Our diesel fuel uh, is of course under, but our CNG is over, so those pretty much even each other out. We're seeing uh, more use with our CNG. Right now our diesel gallon equivalent is 166. Our monthly average diesel cost is 260. So um, we're happy to have CNG, of course. Um, our paratransit expenses are right at where we expected it to be uh, with our new uh, contract for this year. And uh, everything else is pretty much normal, but I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Nikki, on the paratransit expenses, does that include the startup cost or is that just the operating? It includes everything. Okay. Do you yeah. remember how much the startup cost might have been? Uh, not off the top of my head, but I can look that up. Yeah. Yeah, because we, uh, we pay a fixed fee plus a amount per trip each month. Uh, so I can look that up for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Right, there is one action item on the agenda for today. That is Resolution 2023-09, the electron procurement policy update. I'm going to let Alan pull that up, if he would, please. So we do have one resolution this month, as Mr. Dow said, Resolution 2023-09, an update to the procurement policy. Uh, we held this from last month. Um, because these regulations actually don't take effect until tomorrow. The state legislature made a change when they were in session and per, per the state law, um, they don't actually take effect until I believe 90 days after the close of that session. So that's why we held this one for a little bit. Uh, really, um, there's only one uh, real substantive change here and then there's another one that was more of an oversight on my part which I'll make reference to. Um, but as you know, we have our procurement policies and procedures that we are bound to set. Um, FTA requires us to have those policies and procedures in place. So this is this is not new. Um, this is something Lextrain has had for a long time. The original policies and procedure was adopted in November of 1993 and previous updates have taken place in 2014, 2021, and as recently as May of 2022. Um, so we follow FTA circulars as well as Kentucky revised statutes and model procurement code. The, the major res, uh, change that is in, included in this resolution today um, updates the threshold for small purchases and formal procurements from $30,000 to $40,000 uh, in accordance with House Bill 522. That statute or that bill amended uh, the state statute KRS 424.260, which relates to local government contracts. Um, these uh, updates are ap applicable in our policy under Section 1, General Provisions, under Section 5.01, Formal Advertising, and Section 5.02, Quotes. There were some other typographical errors that were corrected in the update that was sent to you. And I also wanted to make note that on page 51 of your policy, um, something that I failed to call out in the updates here was we cleaned up a little bit of language um, that made reference to a purchase order for a $200 purchase. The previous policy had seemed to indicate that um, $200 was the minimum for which Lextrain required a purchase order. And that's not exactly true because in some cases, a vendor, um, you might need a, maintenance might have a part that's $30 and the vendor might require a purchase order. So we wanted to make sure to clean that up with um, the crossing out of the $200 minimum threshold. So we don't have a minimum for which you must do a purchase order. Um, that needs to take place for, for all purchases. And I failed to call that, that update out uh, in the memo that's associated with your resolution. Um, hopefully you had a chance to review your policy. Um, I sent you both um, the clean version as well as red line so you could see uh, what had changed and um, previ any previous versions of that policy. If you would like to review those at any time, we can, we can provide those to you upon request. With that, I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. I want to thank you for the red line. You're yeah, welcome. You're very welcome. Easier. You're very welcome. Yes, very helpful. Could you describe what what types of purchases might fall within that 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 had been above thirty but might be below forty that that um, would now fall into a different category? Do we have many that are that? Um, any any contract that you enter into, um, sometimes we enter into small contracts. 
for um, consulting services, uh, marketing and communications type services um, are, are things that you know come off the top of my head. Um, for some maintenance jobs um, that, that might be that threshold. So it's really, um, it's not so much going to change the types of purchase the types of purchase, but it really just changes the threshold for when we need to formal, formally advertise that. So previously, if we had been unable to, to purchase something because we hadn't done a formal procurement in, in terms of an RFP, um, now it, it has to be $40,000 in order to require that. Um, all of the other provisions of our policy would still apply. Like, um, you know, this, this is not music to the procurement department's ears when I say it's very difficult to buy something, but under our, our thresholds, you know, it, it is. You need to yeah. get three quotes and you need to document that to make sure that we're, we're being good stewards of the funds that we have. So all of those things still apply. You can't just find something or find a vendor and decide that's who you want to work with and really um, go out and easily do that. Got it. That's what I wanted to hear. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Is there a motion to approve Resolution 2023-09? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Judge Thurston. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Liddy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'll send you that electronically for now. Perfect. Um, I thought there was a short change order report. Yes. There is Last one. Uh, short change order does not require board action today, but this is uh, for the board's information. And we are extending the contract with Adsposure for one year. <coughs> Adsposure is the company that provides the turnkey service for our um, bus advertising. They do the sales, uh, manage the inventory, install those ads. And this is um, the purpose of this extension is just to give us a little more time to properly, properly get that RFP on the street and try to get some competition. We wanted to do a little bit of cleanup to the uh, RFP itself and the scope of work as well. So we are making sure that we have this contract in place, or extend our contract rather, that we have, have this service in place um, in the interim. Um, I believe we do have a bit of old business, if that's correct. We do. Um, I am going to ask Mr. Combs to come back to the podium. So what I have asked uh, Fred to do, and I think I have shared this with some members of the board, um, is prepare a high level capital project <coughs> You know, there are, there are a lot of capital projects and things that we are doing that don't necessarily get a lot, a lot of attention at every board meeting. But I wanted to sort of keep these top of mind for, for the time when we come back and have some resolutions for, for things that we need to move forward on. Um, you know, especially some started many years ago before many of you uh, had served on our board um, and at various times throughout. So this is a high level update today, so not not a lot of nitty gritty detail, but we will come back to you with some of that a little bit later. Uh, we have also discussed um, the possibility of having a facilities or capital projects committee of, of this board. Um, that, that might be something that would be wise to help help kind of as we get through all of these, these projects and kind of keep, um, keep a more core group apprised of what is happening for, for the board's purposes. But we don't have to make that decision today. Um, but I wanted to ask Mr. Combs to give give some of these updates. Uh, might also have input from Nikki as well as Chris Withrow in our maintenance department. And we also have Jessica Pence here today who does a lot of the, the heavy lift on the capital planning side um, it, working with Fred. So I have her here today and I don't know that I've ever officially recognized her, but Jessica, thank you for being here and thank you for what you do. Right, thank you, Jill. Um, the first capital project I wanna talk about is our canopy. Um, the canopy is going to be built in two phases. That second phase is unfunded, but the first phase comes from a low and no emissions grant award, um, and that will construct the canopy at our maintenance facility. We're looking at covering 14 electric vehicles with associated charging equipment. Along with that, we're also going to need to construct a small electrical room and implement a new generator. So today you can see a rendering of what the canopy might look like there. There's been um, some minor uh, uh, tweaks, I think some slopes of the roof and things have changed since this rendering was created, but more or less that gives you an idea of what the, the finished canopy might look like. And we've had a couple of major milestones that we've completed. Uh, the big one being we were granted a categorical exclusion from the FTA, and a categorical exclusion is um, asking for an, a review under the National Environmental Protections Act. 
Uh, if you're granted a categorical exclusion, that means your project will not significantly harm the environment in a way that we would have to do a deeper environmental study. So it's a very good thing that we were granted this categorical exclusion. Mm -hmm. And we've also completed our schematic design of the canopy um, and working towards the full construction documents. Uh, the next stage, um, getting at those construction documents is a geotechnical engineering, um, which we have quotes at, in hand that we are evaluating at the moment. And that's going to do some soil boring and, and, and those sorts of things to evaluate what's under the surface to make sure that it's structurally we're sound and that we have followed our property management plan as set forth when the building was constructed or the facility was constructed um, in 2016. So our next capital project is our transit center renovation, um, which is also going to be done in two phases. Uh, we do have some money uh, set aside in the budget for both of those. Uh, the first is the exterior renovation uh, you see in the top two uh, pictures. That is partially funded through a Transportation Alternatives Program grant award from uh, KYTC. With that grant award, we must follow some of the rules or all the rules and regulations set forth by the state. Um, as part of that, uh, we are required to do an invitation for bid rather than an RFP for the exterior portion of this work. Uh, and we have to be granted approval by the state to put out uh, to put out the bid. Uh, that's where we are. We are waiting on our final approval from the state. Um, we have worked through some of the, the things like the DBE goals and the environmental, and we have approval on both of those things. Um, so once we get our final approval from the state, we do have the construction documents ready and our bid documents ready to go. Uh, the next capital project is our CNG facilities. Can I ask a question? Sure. About this, we're not doing the I apologize for breaking up the thing about Greyhound. But we're not doing that little cubby space and the, like, did that go away? We don't have that plan at this okay. time. Um, in fact, Greyhound, um, I don't believe, has a presence any longer in terms of having a customer facing uh, transaction. Right. They do still provide bus service in Lexington, but they, um, they don't have that. They're not working with us. Uh, well, they're not doing that on their own, and they also don't need that from us at this point. Sorry, no worries. Um, our CNG facilities and fleet, uh, which was a bus and bus facilities grant award. Um, the idea here is to improve our CNG related infrastructure here on our campus. There's also some bus purchases that go along with this project, but uh, in terms of the capital improvements, uh, there are two big components to it. The first is increasing our capacity to fuel vehicles, um, and we're going to install two new CNG compressors um, that essentially is going to double our fueling capacity. There's some associated equipment that's going to go along with that. And the second piece is to um, upgrade our maintenance facility, so our maintenance bays. Um, we're going to add things like a methane gas detection system and some um, air exchanges to make sure if methane gas is detected that we can safely uh, get that out of the, the maintenance facility. Um, so we have an application ready for the FTA to review for, our, again, a categorical exclusion to make sure that we, there's no further environmental uh, documentation needed. Um, we're ready to submit that on both of those aspects of the project. Um, Zod Energy, who is our partner with our CNG Fueling Now and, and did the work that's at our fueling, uh, existing Fueling Island, are preparing the cost estimates for their parts of the project. Um, we also have um, a fee proposal from Kersey and Kersey Architects to handle that maintenance facility enhancements piece. Uh, we do have a lot of the design done that was done with our previous um, architecture and engineering contract with WSP. We just need Kersey and Kersey to kind of put their stamp on things and review things to make sure that we're ready to go out to bid for that piece of the project. Fred, where on that map will the canopy go for the electric bus? The canopy is, you see where the, the property or the, the parking yep. lot kind of dips in here? So we're going to extend that concrete out, work on this berm, and that will be roughly where the canopy will go. Thank you. All right, ramp phase three. Um, we've talked about ramp uh, many points of time over the past few years. This um, program is to improve accessibility in passenger amenities of our bus stops. Um, we have a short list of 24 stops uh, for improvement under ramp phase three. That includes 15 shelter replacements, 10 new shelters, and 11 stops with new improved or repaired boarding pads. I know if you add those shelters together, you get 25 and we only have 24 stops. Some of the, the stops at question here, like around campus, have more than one shelter associated with it. Um, and you see there's a before and after, so the, the bottom picture is, is part of ramp phase two, but that's kind of what we want, and there's a shelter replacement, I think that's at the Northside Library at um, Russell K. Um, Road, that we think 
that, that's when we have target that we need to replace. So that gives you a sense of, of kind of the work that we're doing with our ramp project. Um, yes? Was, was it, I have the number 52 in my head. Was that phases one and two or one of those phases? When or? we launched ramp, I think we thought this we're going to aim for 50. Got it. And I think we're at 35 or so that we completed under one and two, something mid-30s. Um, so when this is done, we might not get to 50, but we're going to get pretty close. So, um, I don't think that we will have funding to do all 24 that we have shortlisted, um, but we will, you know, I think put together a really good a program of projects that the public's going to appreciate. And are there still a couple that we're like collaborating with? I know sometimes others will put in mm -hmm. funds to support. Yes, um, we have some book bench uh, that we're more of a community collaboration rather than a financial collaboration. I, I don't think there are any financial collaborations with There's businesses. There's some areas though that LBCG is repairing um, the road and the curb area and then we're going to go back in and um, just complete some final things. So they are helping on some of those. So and that would count in, in this number? Mm -hmm. um, I believe there's one or two of them. <coughs> oh. Thank you. So we are waiting for um, quotes to come back from design and engineering services to see where things stand on, on those stops. I have a question. Sure. Uh, those new ones, do we do kind of a community assessment to see where they're going to be located at? Yes. Um, as we launched the ramp uh, project, we did a transit facilities inventory where we did an inventory of all the stops and we measured the ADA accessibility of all the stops. Um, on top of that, we looked at ridership trends and to try to figure out which ones we should prioritize. Um, we also looked spatially to make sure that we were being equitable um, in the communities that those stops were located. And, you know, we tried to do as fair as we could across um, council districts and other ge geographies as well to, to prioritize where we thought the need was the greatest. Did you have those locations or we haven't actually Location. Yes, we do have the locations of the ones we've already completed and the 24 that we have have uh, shortlisted here. We do have that. Okay. If I can get a copy of that, just because I've been in several community meetings and one of the things they're saying, like one of the sample is Goodwill, where they uh, have so many people that are looking for jobs and they have so many programs going on and they actually don't have one in their area. Yes, we can share that with you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have one more project to talk about. Um, this one isn't a capital project as you might think of capital projects, but it is a line item in our capital budget. Um, this is the CAD ABL and related technologies. Um, you might see like an intelligent transportation systems project or something like that. But this, this has so many different components to it. Um, and, and it really has a reach across all the departments and all the functions at Lextran. We think CAD ABL, which is computer aided dispatch and automatic vehicle location. Um, that's sort of the, the screenshot that you see, um, which is what our dispatchers would see on a daily basis of where the buses are, what status the buses are in, uh, and how to sort of manage the day-to-day -day operations of our system. The, the data that we get out of this is tremendous. It's, you know, we use it in planning to think about how have we done, what's our performance been, how can we improve, we can identify different parts of, of um, our operations to work on. Um, but also included in this is our enterprise resource um, management platform, which is currently FleetNet. You might have heard us talk about that before. That is connecting our finance and procurement with our maintenance staff to make sure that our work orders and our purchase orders are properly documented. Um, we have an easier time working through audits. Um, it's just a tremendous <coughs> part of what we do. Um, and, and as we think about replacing, you know, schedule and data management, that's our business intelligence. That's how we uh, build our bus schedules. Um, it really is a, a huge part of, of how we efficiently do our jobs. So our current um, CAD ABL vendor is Vail, and we've had many discussions about them. They were implemented here in 2012. Uh, the contract that we exist, or have existing will end in December of 2024, so that'll put us about 12 years um, with Avail. So we feel that it's time to, to perhaps see what else is out there, see what's on the market. Um, we are currently working on our uh, scope of work and, and procurement documents to put out an RFP um, within the coming weeks to, to kind of see what else is out, see what's out there and see what's the best fit for Lexman in the future. And I do want to add, um, for the board's sake, but also for the staff, I have said this, you know, as we explore the available options, 
This does not necessarily mean that a veil won't be the clear winner. We just need to make sure that we are being responsible and that we have the best option um, that is available for, for our agency and for the community. Um, you know, as he said, we've been with Avail for 12 years. Um, so during that time, you know, we have not necessarily been heavily shopping around to see what's on the market. We do see things at conferences and things of that nature. Um, but uh, it's, this is not definitively saying we're, we're breaking up with, it, we're, with anyone. Uh, we're just um, going out to market. I was going to ask a question. How state of the art is LexTrans technology versus similar sized transit authorities? I would say for our size agency, we do pretty well. Um, I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as state of the art, um, but we do have, um, you know, pretty pretty good onboard systems. There's always room for improvement. There's always new things that are coming out that uh, we hear about in industry publications or that we see see when we attend conferences and trade shows and hear about from our peers. Um, but we want to make sure that we're, you know, we're staying where we need to be. Um, not sure that we want to always be bleeding edge um, because we have, in, in other ways, experienced some of the heartburn that comes from that, but want to make sure that we are exploring the options that are available to us. And as I said, you know, we had hoped that this could be just a hi higher level update for the board. Um, we'll get into some more additional things um, coming, but did not want um, you to be completely taken by surprise if resolutions come your way in the coming months to proceed with construction documents or um, enter into contract for something uh, on the, like the CAD ABL side, for example. And these things are included in that five-year capital, yes. capital budget. Does anyone have any other questions for uh, Fred? Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. All right. Next on the agenda, uh, new business. Any new business? I do not have any completely brand spanking new business for the board, but for the sake of transparency, I did want to say, um, you know, the board, the board is aware of this, but for the sake of transparency, say this out loud, uh, that our assistant general manager, uh, former assistant <coughs> general manager, Byron Robinson, um, has uh, departed, Lextran, his last day was last week, and he will begin his tenure as the general manager of RATP Dev, our paratransit provider, on July 5th. So very excited for him to have that opportunity and have a lot of confidence in the good work that he is going to do there. So that is uh, where he is today, um, or where his, what his status is today, I, I guess would be a better way to categorize that. Um, so I wanted to make sure to sh share that aloud. What conversations have you had with TransDev on a replacement? I have had some conversations with TransDev, um, and the job is posted, and I have at least one uh, candidate that I have spoken with, so we are, we are moving forward with that process. Any uh, other proposed agenda items for coming months? Um, not that I'm aware of. Uh, we currently have our board officer elections slated for July. That is in accordance with our bylaws. Um, Mr. Dow will make committee appointments in July. Um, further capital projects update. Um, we will have a resolution for a drug and alcohol policy update at some point um, based on changes in legislation from federal DOT. And then we will have a more in-depth presentation about the ramp program at a coming meeting. Any need for closed session today? I do not have a need for closed session today. Right. Anything else from the board or our staff? All right. Thanks very much, everybody. We will stand adjourned.